Uh, welcome, this is Annie House Drew. I was gonna talk about my gear that I normally wear every day. Um, anyways, so I like to think that actually I probably wear more gear than most other people. Um, there's a saying in the motorcycle community called AppGap, also known as all the gear all the time. And I kind of believe in that. Um, I think what kind of started, it was like a couple of years ago, my wife and I kind of uh, low-sided on a scooter at about 25 miles an hour and we got completely like scraped up and everything. And we really learned a lesson about having to wear proper gear, um, especially when you're on a motorcycle or scooter. It doesn't really matter how big it is. Um, as soon as you hit the uh, asphalt, you're going to get a road rash and it's, that's no fun. Anyways, uh, long story short, I'm just going to get right into the gear that um, I normally wear every day. So um, one of the things I like to do is I get really paranoid about my legs uh, because apparently when you get into a bike crash, one of the first things that actually hits the ground um, is actually your legs, which I think is really funny because a lot of times when you're on the road, I see a lot of people, they, they'll wear like a proper like Dainese like leather jacket top, but then they're wearing like shorts on the bottom, which doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, it's great that you're protecting your top though, but when you go down, like I said, it's usually the first thing that scrapes is your legs and, and whatnot. So, um, for, so the bottom half of me, I, I got these awesome jeans um, ordered uh, from England uh, by a company called uh, Maple Motorcycle, um, or Maple, Maple, yeah, yeah, Maple Motorcycle Jeans. They make salvage denim um, that has, uh, that are Kevlar reinforced on the inside. Um, these are the skinny uh, blacks, also known as the 1976. Um, what I like about them is that the seat of the jeans themselves have uh, are Kevlar reinforced, and they also have um, an area where you can insert knee pads right here and whatnot. So generally, these areas uh, are the parts that usually land. Uh, they even have pockets for the hips. I most of the time don't. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Most of the time, I don't actually have my hip protectors in, um, and then I also don't put the knee pads in, but the reason why, I'll show you in a bit, why I don't put knee pads in these pants. And the reason why I don't put knee pads in these pants is because I actually like to wear uh, my knee pads, these knee pads, uh, by Dianese. They're pretty great, they're uh, pretty all-encompassing. Um, they cover a good portion of your shin over here, and as well as your actual knee area, and they strap in three places. Um, so some people will argue, it's like, well, knee pads aren't effective if you're not wearing them underneath your pants. Well, truth of the matter is, having knee pads is better than not having any knee pads at all. So um, these have been working pretty well for me. Um, and then I also wear these boots. Um, some people, when they see them, they look like ski boots. But I kind of believe in better safe than sorry. What I like about these CD boots is that you can actually wear them for the track. Um, but I don't ride track that often. So for commuting, these work great. They're easy to slip on. Um, and the nice thing is on a nice hot like summer day, um, these things actually have venting on the side, which are fantastic. I, you know, when I first bought these, I didn't really think that they were gonna be noticeable in terms of the venting, but um, on one hot day, I actually had them open and I was really happy to have like all the air blowing into uh, my feet. Oh yeah, no, they, these are super flexible. That's another thing too about them, is that they're super, they're super flexible, but they're also you know reinforced on the uh, plastic on the outside. Um, and, you know, it's got a good, good amount of protection and whatnot. Um, moving on to the top, I recently got, um, actually last year, the Speedy Jacket. It's called the Speedy Venture H2 Out. Um, it's great. It's fairly water resistant and it's it pretty much, I would consider a, a four season jacket. Um, I actually replaced the back protector with one by, um, force field uh, for a longer for for a longer back protection. Most most jackets when they come with a back protector they only come to about here and I got this one because I want to make sure it at least reaches down to my cossacks back down here. Um, what I like about this jacket is that um, it's it's made from Cordura fabric or at least the propri their proprietary uh, fabric. I don't think it's actually Cordura, it's some version that Speedy has designed. Um, and it's you know the, the venting here is great. Events at the shoulders and at the arms, and also events on the side, on the back. 
kind of like shark fins. Um, what I also like about this is that this sleeve actually has a little bit of a, a pocket. Uh, one would call maybe like a passport holder. Or if you're traveling or if you're touring, this is great. Um, I've used it as a key fob uh, card thing where you can slip it in here and it's just kind of like wipe it against a door to get it to open on certain like doors if you work at a place that has like a key fob type of thing. This jacket works great. What I also really like about this jacket is that it actually has um, these cross straps, which are apparently like are like a huge thing in Europe. Um, these cross straps are nice. They wrap around from underneath and they basically keep your jacket down. So this, this jacket works great. Right now, um, this jacket actually comes with a liner. That's fantastic. Um, and the liner actually looks like, looks like this. It's water resistant um, and it actually has a removable fleece portion. Um, at least I think it's fleece. Um, maybe it's down. I'm not sure, but either way, it's super warm. Um, I, you know, living in LA, like it's like I said before, it, the weather here is pretty mild, um, but it does get pretty cold. And on a few cold mornings, I've actually worn this thing with the whole uh, liner, and oh my gosh, it really does keep you warm. So uh, that's it, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and put it all on and show you what it looks like when it all comes together. All right, guys. So this is what it looked like with all the gear on. Um, you know, I might I might not look like a fashion model, obviously, but uh, one of the things, uh, one saying that's always stuck with my head, and my wife actually reminds me of this uh, a few times, actually, is that you want to dress for the crash and not for the ride. And for this, commuting to work is pretty awesome. Um, as you can see right now, I got the maple jeans on. What I like about these maple jeans is that they don't look like motorcycle pants, and you can actually wear them around work, depending on the type of work environment you're in, of course, obviously. Um, the work environment I'm in is slightly more casual, I'm not, I don't have to go to work in a suit. Um, so these actually work really, really, really well. Um, when I get to work, I usually just take off uh, the knee pads and the boots, and I have a pair of shoes already waiting for me, so I'll just change into those shoes. But this is what I look like. So the nice thing about this jacket is that um, the these little light bits here, the white parts, are actually reflective, and they really they show up pretty well when you have when you shine a uh, headlight on them. I don't know in camera right now if you can see them kind of reflecting. I'm not sure if there's enough light in this room to actually show that, but. In general, at night, they're really great and they're nice and reflective. Um, the, the, with this jacket in general, the cool thing about this is that you could readjust how tight you want the arms to be. Um, and this is really helpful because you don't want a bunch of like excess material just kind of like flapping all over the place in the wind. So this works really, really well. Um, I'm also, uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about are uh, my gloves and the helmet I wear. These are the Dionese uh, gloves. I forgot. <laughs> This is really bad. I actually forgot the name of these gloves, but um, these are awesome. Um, they come with a little uh, knuckle protector. The reason why I like the gauntlet style gloves as opposed to the Icon, I have a pair of Icon Pursuits that are actually shorter, um, is that I'm, I'm also a little bit paranoid about if, if and when I crash, um, about uh, scraping my um, wrist area. And the gauntlet style gloves provide a lot of protection against that kind of thing. Um, they're also nice and warm too, especially when you start getting up to speed, if you're on a faster bike on the freeway or something like that. Um, these things actually do block a lot of wind, which is great. Um, and then last uh, is my Shoei helmet. This is the RF 1100. It's a little bit older because uh, now they have the RF 1200, but um, this thing's pretty awesome. I got this thing in sort of an obnoxious, maybe what some people would call a KTM orange. Um, I like it because it's highly visible, people will see you, you know, especially with a brightly colored helmet like this. I've um, decked it out with a Euclear um, headset, a Bluetooth. It connects to my phone. Um, in another video, I think in the night video, I demonstrated like what's like when people give you a call and everything. Um, it's boomless, so it works uh, pretty well. The only thing is, is that you have to make sure that the ear earpieces are aligned, otherwise um, the noise cancellation will actually cancel out your voice. Um, I also got this, what's called the Pinlock Visor, and in the, in the Pinlock Visor, um, I got, I ordered from England uh, one of the Pinlock inserts that actually reacts to the sun and will actually um, sort of, it will actually tint it a bit, uh, similar to uh, how some people have glasses that will transition from indoor to outdoor. Um, to be honest with you, you know, 
I spent 90 bucks on the visor thinking, like, oh, this would be awesome. I can go outside and don't have to change out my, my lens. But um, it doesn't really work that well because I think the way uh, the actual instrument works is that it re reacts to UV light. And with the uh, with this particular visor, the, this visor actually has a little bit of UV protection. And that little bit of UV protection pretty much negates uh, how useful the actual thing works. But other than that, um, what actually, the how the the pin lock insert actually does do well is that it actually uh, blocks out a lot of, it prevents a lot of fogging, um, which is useful because uh, before I had this pin lock insert, I'd always have to keep um, just the crack of my helmet open um, to prevent the lenses from fogging up. And the pin lock insert actually does a pretty good job of keeping the fogging down, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead and just put on this helmet and gloves and then uh, show you what it looks like, the whole entire ensemble. Anyways, that's it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to um, uh, leave some comments down below and then hopefully I'll get back to you guys. Thanks for watching my video.